Welcome. This is Majesty Sussex Report and I'm Antonia. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time here with us. In this episode, we will be reviewing the documentary presented by Channel 4. I'm, rev- I'm, I'm, I'm titling this review, A Crown of Spin, Unveiling the Real Agenda Behind Queen Camilla, the Wicked Stepmother. Tells four documentary, Queen Camilla, the Wicked Stepmother, promises intrigue, delivering a tale of transformation, controversy, and an uneasy rise to the throne. Yet what it ultimately offers is a blatant exercise in public relations, carefully crafted to elevate Queen Camilla's image, while shyly diminishing Prince Harry's and his grievances. Far from a balanced exploration of her role as a stepmother or a nuanced examination of royal family dynamics, the documentary emerges as a clearing example of media manipulation in service of power. outset, the title alone misleads viewers. The Wicked Stepmother implies an unflinching dive into the contentious relationships between Camilla, Harry, and William. Instead, it spends the majority of its runtime recounting her story. Painting Camilla as an a misunderstood victim of circumstances, a woman unfairly maligned for loving a man who happened to be heir to the throne. The focus shifts swiftly from her family dynamics to a romanticized account of her remarkable rise conveniently glossing over the deeply complex and painful relationships that the title suggests will take center stage. When it does address Prince Harry's views, documentary handles them with remarkable cynicism. His relationship with Camilla detailed in spare and numerous interviews are dismissed as grievances or outbursts while Camilla's role in the media leaks he described is sanitized or they're just ignored outright the result is not an inquiry into royal dysfunction, but an unsettling attempt to frame Harry as the embittered outlier, a petulant figure standing in the way of the monarchy's unity. Integral to the documentary's agenda is its reliance on royal correspondents and biographers, many of whom are well-documented architects of palace-approved narratives, 
Figures like Pierce Morgan and Jeremy Clarkson, known for their visceral attack on Meghan Markle, are given disproportionate space to bluster Camilla's image while discrediting Harry's and all the other clowns that they had on the documentary. Their commentary barely disguise its agenda to rehabilitate Camilla's reputation while cementing her position within the royal family future. Lucy Mangan's critique in The Guardian aptly summarizes this tactic. In quotation, the campaign to rehabilitate Camilla has been subtle. It has all the, su <laughs> the subtlety of a sledgehammer, end of quote. And that's also said in the documentary. The inclusion of these media figures is neither incidental nor journalistic. It's an exercise in propaganda that underscores this symbiotic relationship between the monarchy and the British press. The timing of this documentary raises pointed questions. Only weeks ago, Channel 4 aired a damning expose on the duchies of Cornwall and Lancaster, detailing the vast fortunes amassed by the monarchy. Now this program serves as a, what? <laughs> a striking counterbalance? A soft, sympathetic portrayal of Camilla? This, this soft portrayal seems designed to curry favor with the palace. Could there be an unspoken trade-off at play? A hard-hitting report on royal finances followed by a glowing profile of Camilla. Feels less like coincidence and more like calculated appeasement. Amongst the most glaring manipulations is the treatment of Prince Harry's first-hand account. His claims of being used as a pawn to boost Camilla's reputation, detailed extensively in spare, are dismissed as delusions or exaggerations. Yet the documentary's own <laughs> content, okay? Their own content contradicts this dismissal. It recounts the role of PR strategist Mark Boland in orchestrating Camilla's public rehabilitation, a campaign that by its own admission often involved leveraging royal narratives, including those of Charles' son, to shift public perception. Harry's recollections, I love using that word by the way, are reframed as petulant complaints while Camilla is presented as a fairy tale figure. Steadfast in her love for Charles, an enduring public hatred, but quite grace indeed. This imbalance not only discredits Harry, but also erases the pain of a man born into an institution that has repeatedly prioritized optics over familiar bonds. The documentary inadvertently highlights a deeper issue here. The machinery of British media and its role in preserving power. By leaning in heavily on royal insiders and reporters with clear biases, it exposes how narratives are shaped not by truth, but by vested interest. Camilla's ascent, framed as a story of resilience, 
is emblematic of how public opinion can be engineered through selective storytelling and strategic omission. In doing so, the documentary reveals the larger ecosystem of complicity between the monarchy and the press, a relationship that protects some members of the royal family at the expense of others. Camilla's close ties to journalists like Clarkson and Morgan and the other ones, and her position as patron of St. Bride's Church, the so-called journalist church, are not merely symbolic, but strategic. They ensure her continued insulation from, 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 from scrutiny, even as other royals are thrown under the proverbial bus. What this so-called Queen Camilla, the wicked stepmother, ultimately presents is not journalism, it's propaganda. Its agenda is clear to shield Camilla from criticism, diminish Harry's credibility, and distract from broader issues within the monarchy. The British media's willingness to participate in this charade or charade underscores the urgent need for accountability not only within the royal institution, but within journalism itself. As viewers, we must, we must question the narrative presented to us and recognize the patterns of manipulation at play. The monarchy's survival may depend on controlling its image but the public's understanding of, of the truth should not be collateral damage. Camilla's story may be one of transformation, but this documentary is not a transformation of a different kind, a reshaping of history to suit power. That's what it is. Let us not be fooled by the sheen, the glitteriness, the shininess of royal pageantry or the smoothness of media spin. The real story lies not in Camilla's crown, but in the mechanisms that placed it there and the voices that have been silenced along the way and that is my take on this so-called documentary don't miss later today i'll be talking about the media once again and the dying art of journalism in the uk based on an article by Byline Times. Thank you. Until then. And taking off all is good.